for fast recap. Get hyped for fast internet with AT&T Fiber as the Warriors. They allow 79 points in the first half, but Mully in the second. The Thunder score only 46, and the Warriors were able to win, going away by 11. Stephen Curry with 34 points. Jordan Poole with 18 of his 30 in the fourth quarter. That was his 13th 30-point performance of the season, and the Warriors 18-2 at home in games decided by 10-plus points. They won 16-18, 33 games overall at Chase Center. Let's hear from the head coach of the Warriors, Steve Kerr, presented by BMW. Gave up 79 points in the, in the first half. I can't imagine you were too thrilled with that. What happened defensively in the second half? I think you limited it to 49, something like that. Uh, yeah, you- I mean, th- this team is uh, very capable of doing what they did in the first half. Um, you know, we, I've watched them. You know, a lot this year. They're a really good young team, and they're tough to guard because uh, they they often have. Um, they usually have four guys with at about six seven who can all dribble, pass, and shoot. It's a really impressive group of young players, and uh, and Shea is almost impossible to keep out of the paint. So um, they were hitting everything, and I think they had 21 free throws in the first half uh, too. Um, and we just did a better job in the second half of um, getting some ball pressure and picking up our intensity. Steve, when when did Clay's um back kind of uh, become an issue? Uh, just right before our walkthrough. So, okay. Yeah, and, it but was a late, it, you know, totally unexpected. Okay. And it just flared up. You got a great lift. I mean, Moses, Dante, your, your backcourt yeah. guys gave you a lot, even without him. How, how important was that? Moses, a stretch there uh, in the third, and um, just those guys doing yeah. their thing. Um, Moses and Dante um, off the bench were both um, – Huge um, Moses, um, you know I can't say enough about this young guy. The way he has prepared and worked, and um, he's so mature. And over the last couple of weeks, you could really see uh, the improvement and the confidence and the strength around the basket. And um, you know, I think I told you guys this, but when I talked to him, Bob and I talked to him a couple of months ago and asked him how he, how he was doing with not playing much and he he said look i i chose to develop in the nba not at arkansas if i was at arkansas i'd be playing but i chose to develop in the nba and this is part of it it's like the most mature answer i've ever heard anybody give um but that's who he is he's just a really mature young guy and he gets it there's a lot to learn and um but he puts in the work he puts in the time he's got an incredible attitude and um you know, he's, the work is paying off, and uh, he's getting better. And tonight he was one of the keys to the game. Steve, how do these fourth-quarter comebacks, second-half comebacks, you guys have had a lot of them this year at home after slow starts, how do they affect the aging process? <laughs> uh, to be honest, I age a little bit more on the road, believe it or not, Monty. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's so much fun to, to play at home in front of our crowd. Um, we have such a connection, you know, w- with what has happened here over the last decade. And, and uh, I think we thrive off of the energy in this building and in front of our fans. And um, and you can see the competitiveness, the the, um, the force that comes from Draymond and, and, uh, and Steph. Um, Looney, the guys who have been here a while, they, they understand, you know, these games – take a long time 48 minutes is a lot of basketball and um with with our ability to get stops um and then how that translates to guys like steph and jordan and clay getting hot um, at the other end um we feel like we're always in in the game steve uh now it remained the case tonight against oklahoma city again they were down 10 at the half, did not play well in that first half at all, but they gave up 46 points to get their offense rolling. And look, here, he had a big first half of 24 points uh, to keep the Warriors, to pace the Warriors, to keep them in the basketball game. But they were able to win going away the second half with Stephen Curry going two of nine from the floor in the second half. So his shot left him in the second half. He had the Warriors win by 11, but he set the tone, six threes there. 
and the Warriors are 11 0 at home when he makes at least six threes. He was able to get up 13 attempts, and Willie, you always circled that one. When the team gives up Kerr, 13 attempts to Stephen Curry, you're asking for an L. Yeah, but you look at the six assists, the five rebounds, uh, and I thought Steph played a great first half to keep the game close, you know, and then obviously when he has 24 at half, the defense is going to start covering him a little tighter, opens up driving lanes for Jordan Poole, opens up shots for his teammates. Uh, in the second half, they did a much better job. Individual defense. And to me, you know, they went to a box and one on Shea, Shea Gilgis Alexander because they were getting into the paint so easy. And that took the rhythm and flow out of Oklahoma City's offensive game. Uh, so a very good uh, defensive strategy by the Warriors going box and one, uh, making OKC exclusively a three-point shooting team. And, and that really flipped the game for the Warriors. Uh, Steph Curry, look, no matter what he's doing on the floor, the attention that he uh, gets from the opposing defense just opens up so many opportunities for his teammates. There's a lot of attention that gets paid to his three-point shooting. But I think there's so much, like, he's gotten so much better. His game is so much different from what I even remember. Every year he continues to get better. This is year 14. And now, even when his three balls not falling, he's driving to the paint. He's finishing at the rim in front of Biggs, getting fouled six for six from the line tonight. Steph Curry continues to evolve. And so whether he's two for nine or not, I don't think that tells the story of what he does when he's on the floor. Whether the defense is hugged up against him and open in driving lanes, or he's setting screens for other guys to get open and get layups, there's different ways that he involves the game. And as a superstar, probably one of the rare superstars that, that affects the game that way without the ball. Nah, that's a good point there. Uh, Steph finishes with 34 points. And you mentioned the attention that he gets as we take a look at our Alaska Airlines high-flying highlight of the game. Steph Curry pull it up there, but Moses Moody oh! rocking it. Yeah, big fella. Watch your head. For Gary Payton a second. Excuse me. I could tell right there. It's Watch GP2 your head. Game, Forgot about those highs. Little big fella. And by the way, the biggest shot of the game was Steph Curry's three-point shot when it was tied 115. 115 to make it 118, 115. Looked like Moses Moody for a second. He had a dunk on the other end. That looks similar to GP2's dunk. All our guards jumping above the rim. Are at, we have athletes. We have young athletes. And when we talk about uh, competing against teams like Oklahoma City, these are young athletic teams. And so this is why you have to integrate your young guys on this team because guys like Jonathan Kaminga, guys like GP2, Moses Moody, these young athletes are the ones that can keep up with those guys and are able to stay in front of them on the defense. Defensive end. And I just love seeing GP2. He had that one last game where he almost got. He said, I'm, I feel like I'm getting there. My legs are getting back. It feels like his legs are back now. You know, this is back to back games now. The Warriors had 22 offensive rebounds last game, 19 tonight. Tonight, uh, 30 to 12 second chance points. And, and, and as Festus is right, you know, if, if it's Steph, Jordan Poole, Dante DiVincenzo on the three point line, that, those other two players, they're inside the three. They go after the offensive rebound. No one's better than Kevon Looney. But uh, Dante DiVincenzo is very good at GP2 is very good at it. So they've really made a as a small ball team have really made an impact on the offensive glass. And Steve Kerr leaned on GP2 in that second half. He only played four minutes and 22 seconds in the opening half. He finished with over 17 minutes played, included that highlight there with the slam dunk. The put Warriors, they hang on here. And they're now in fifth place in the Western Conference. But they're tied with the Clippers in the loss column with 38. Huge game tomorrow night at Crypto.com Arena between the Lakers and the Clippers. And, of course, New Orleans, they fall there to 39 losses. So if the Clippers win tomorrow, they will jump to go to State Warriors for the fifth spot, and the Warriors will go down to six, and the Lakers will stay in that box in the playing tournament. Now, the Lakers could beat the Clippers tomorrow, and everything gets jumbled there. So good news for the Warriors. They just got to win out here. They've got to win out because of all the tiebreakers. Right, so they they don't own tiebreakers versus the Clippers or the Lakers. So if they have the same records, they'll drop down. Ideally, they stay at six, I think. I'm not quite sure you want to be at five. At that point, it doesn't matter. But ideally, I think, as Festus said, I think whether it be the Lakers, the Clippers, or the Warriors, they prefer going to Sacramento. Listen, it's the playoffs. Bring on all the smoke. I've been thinking about this. You know what? If you, you want, want to go win a championship, you got to go through everybody. KD, Kawhi, whoever it is. Luka was out the playoffs. I thought he was going to be one of the guys. John Morant, he said he was fine in the West. So if you want to win a championship, you have to go through all the best. And Kevin, Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns, they look very good. So a lot of people want, a lot of people want to avoid the five spot hey, because undefeated. that's the first round. But... Listen, if you want to win a championship, you can't be seeking out matchups. It's time to go. It's Jared playoff Draymond time. Green, he said, we'll take on anybody. It doesn't matter. But for traveling, it's a bus ride. Yeah. 
And then Fezzi's like, bring on all comers. Bring it on. Especially since Let's I'm announcing go. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have to guard oh, Kevin Durant on oh, the perimeter. You know, you, know, you know I want that smoke, mother. I know. Come on now. From, Don't do with that. With the mic, for don't sure. Do that. No don't doubt. do that. <laughs> so by the time we come in Friday, who knows where the Warriors could be in the standings. And we don't know how Sacramento may play that game Friday night against the Golden State Warriors because it seems like they're locked in to the three spot. Yeah, but I think, as Fest said, I think all these teams need to play the best basketball and, and let the chips fall where they may. Because as, as Steph said, you want to win out to, to have that momentum going into the playoffs. The Warriors have not had much consistency all season long. The Clippers have, the lineup has not been uh, consistent all year long. The Lakes are trying to find themselves. So to me, it's more getting your own team together and where you, you wind, wind up, you wind up and prepare yourself for the playoffs. All right, with Dante DiVincenzo, he struggled in the month of March from the three-point line, shooting 29% from beyond the arc. Tonight, he came off the bench, snapping a 22. Uh, he started for 22 straight games for the Golden State Warriors. Tonight, comes off the bench, scores a quick eight in the first quarter, 16 points overall, goes 50% from the three-point line. He was active on the glass. Assists were up, five assists there, two steals. He played all the winning plays tonight for the Warriors, Willie. No question. Eight points in the first quarter kept that game close. You know, when you give up 79 points, you're lucky you're not down 20. So the Warriors come out in the second half, only give up 46 points. Dante DiVincenzo's efficiency, his three-point shot making. And one of the, uh, to me, the biggest play of the game was his offensive rebound tipped out to Steph Curry. The score tied at 115. Steph d knocks down that three-point shot. The pursuing uh, possession, GP2 finds Draymond Green for a layup. They go up five. Game over. Winner. That's what I think about when I think about Dante DiVincenzo. And the guy really, you said this earlier before the game, the reason why he came off the bench today, it could be that they're solidifying the roles for this team. That Andrew Wiggins, when he comes back, he's going to be a starter. And Dante DiVincenzo is coming off the bench to, to really solidify his role on this team, coming off the bench, being the guy who, who really just uh, facilitates the offense. He's a defensive stopper. He's picking up guys up 50, uh, 94 feet. He's doing all the little things. You talk about him tipping out the, the, the offensive rebound. This is a guard. And he's in there with the big guys going to go get the rebounds. He's bringing the ball up and facilitating five assists tonight. I love his energy. I love the things that he brings. That last game against Denver, that last push for the Warriors to go from down, what, they were down 11 with two minutes left. He made those plays. He made three plays in a row, going to the rim. Finding ways to win is the name of the game right now. You got to win, and you need your, your winners on the floor. It's invaluable to have players like Kevon Looney, Dante DiVincenzo, who have really started a lot of games, but they have no problem going to the bench uh, and coming in the game and having the same impact on winning. And they flipped that game in the third quarter with Looney and DiVincenzo starting the second half. As